All right, and let's get into it. One of the new features you're gonna notice in the 2.4.7 update right away is when I hit the loop icon here, you notice the little meters that are uh, playing right here. Pretty cool. Now I'm not gonna sure how that's gonna affect the GUI's performance, but I'm quite sure the developers, when they were writing a script, I'm pretty sure they're uh, thinking about us. You know, it has some improved uh, audio and MIDI inputs to my understanding. You know, I haven't really tested that out yet. Uh, this update, I only had it for, wow, man, like a day. So it's pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Um, for example, the scene linking feature. Okay, like up here, here's a scene. Uh, for those who don't understand the scene, uh, let me break it down right quick. Think of your scene, uh, let's say as a suitcase. You know, if you're like an agent or uh, whatever, you know, you want to keep all your secret little documents inside your little suitcase. You know, that's that's the way I interpret it. You know, and these are your bars and your beats here. You know, you have one bar, second beat, third beat, fourth beat, second bar, you know, on and on. You know, you guys are pretty much familiar with that, I'm sure. Now, when it comes to your patterns, they have this really cool feature on your hardware controller. For example, if let's say if I go to scene here on my hardware controller and I hit the duplicate icon like so, you have okay down here this is what's called your your focus pattern think of this as a reference okay for the original uh, scene that was right here they look the same but they're not uh, basically what happens is this pattern uh, you can make it unique uh, they have a feature where you press shift and when you press shift you hold you hold uh, the second button on the left hand screen it's gonna say unique when I click that you notice how it immediately changes to scene two, pattern two. So, boom, you're making uh, scenes and patterns on the fly now. So a lot of producers, I'm quite sure they will appreciate that because that's going to give them uh, creating scenes on the fly. Uh, down here, it says pattern six, only because there uh, there's five other patterns down here on this little sample chop, uh, group here on group B, but I wouldn't worry about that. You know, that normally would say pattern two like this so if you want to keep things neat if you have some extra scenes in there i mean uh extra patterns in there that you didn't need just erase them off if you want to keep everything flowing smooth and sequential that's how you would do that and to test that out i can press uh go to scene duplicate again and again here is a reference of the duplicated scene shift unique you see that everything is smooth scene one Pattern one, scene two, pattern two, scene three, pattern three. Now I can go to scene and what I can do is I can highlight all these groups, which basically uh, enables the loop enable here. Uh, on your hardware controller, you can press shift and loop to turn that off, on, off, on, or you can do it with your mouse here, off, on, off, on. That's how you loop your patterns. Uh, another way you can do it, if you want to make a scene unique, uh, I can't do it here because these are already done. Like when I press right click here, it will be grayed out. You see where it says unique. So to get that unique feature to become active, I have to go over here to scene three. Okay, duplicate that scene. Okay, again, this is gonna be a mouse example. Right click, unique. Scene four, pattern four. Okay, you also can control the length. Your length, as you see the little dog ear uh, tail comes here. That's because when the scene is actually shorter than the pattern, nine times out of ten, that's what you're going to get. Or usually when you go just below the fourth bar, uh, it gives that dog ear tail. I would imagine they might link that up with uh, the patterns maybe in the future. I'm not really sure about that. But generally for me, it only dog ears when I go you know, under four bars, you know, if I'm you know a little dizzy on that just you, know, you guys just leave a comment in the section before uh in the section below and just let me know all right so that's how that works also remember you have independent uh scene and pattern lengths so let me zoom out out of this right quick and i'll show you what i mean let me grab this second one for example i'm going to go to scene two and i'm going to adjust the length on that 
you notice how it kind of is like a like a bulldozer it bulldozes uh these little guys here out the way so you know if you want to get in there and you know take a look at that i'm not going to do that in this video you know because the last video i really went in depth on that so take a look at our machine 2.4.6 update you know if you want to you know get into adjusting your patterns and things of that nature because what happens is that they're linked now so if i go to group a for example uh let's go to pattern let's go to pattern two like this and if i adjust the length on that you see how that's independent okay i can make that short or as long as i want and if i go to group b and do the same thing again it's independent okay but if i go to scene and control the length you see that i'll, I'll be looping that that little area right there you can loop anywhere in the scenes and patterns for example this little icon here you see how it's going by what's called bars let me zoom in on that so i want to make sure you guys get a good understanding of that <clears throat> again there's your bars and beats one bar second bar i mean i'm getting confused here <laughs> one bar second beat third beat fourth beat second bar okay bars and beats you get it all right let me go over there and zoom in on that so you can see what i mean okay boom when i move this you see how that's jumping by a whole bar one bar second beat third beat fourth beat okay kind of jumping so you have an icon here okay this is completely independent than the one down here that you're normally used to when it comes to you know quantizing what's in your focus pattern here uh this is more or less for setting the length for example if i do one bar here the length in your focus pattern let me shorten this down to i'm gonna do four right quick i don't know why i had that so long like okay so you notice how that's jumping by bars <clears throat> look up there okay you see that completely independent so in other words that means okay if this is one bar this pattern up here is playing when that pattern plays this pattern is going to repeat don't be confused by that if you see this timeline moving that doesn't mean it's playing what's in this little grayed out well not grayed out but these little darkened areas it's playing this these two little notes right here is looping See what I mean? So, you know, if I was down there and then I had, you know, a snare, whatever, like if I put it on a bar here, uh, go over here, grab a snare. Let's just go ahead and grab this little snare here, grab him on there, and we put him here. I need to get a little more finer. Sorry about that. Because, you know, it's quantizing these notes. So it's, let's put a guy right here. Guy right here. Guy right here. And a guy right here. So now when I play it, just tempo on that. You can see the little representation of the audio levels playing right there. Now see, the pattern is only this long, but the scene is playing. So it's completely independent of that. So that's how that uh, pretty much works on those levels. Um, yeah, there was something I wanted to mention, but it's slipping my mind right now. <laughs> but okay, that's pretty much how that works. These uh, these scenes and these patterns, okay, they're, they're linking like that. So again, I can go into the length of the scene, completely independent. From the pattern you're not gonna loop the pattern up like that and you have a retrigger icon here if you want to you know retrigger by you know certain values such as a bar half note quarter note eighth note sixteenths or by scenes themselves uh nine times a ten which is what most people are going to do when they're playing live uh you know the machine jam integrates perfectly with the uh the mk1 mk2 in the studio you know if you want to use your jam with that you know, you can go ahead and do it that way. Some people are not really feeling the jam. I think it's kind of dope. It has like, you know, 
you know, the little step sequencer and stuff like that. But um, all right, now let's get into some other features. Uh, let's go to group me. I'm going to jump on the sampling screen here and I have a sample right here. And if you see my last video on the machine 2.4.6, you guys pretty much know how that works uh, with the lazy chop, you know, or whatever you want to call it, live slicing. You know, people have their own name for it. There's a million one names for it. But um, I call it the lazy chop because basically what happens is watch my last video. It's basically you can create your slices on the fly. That's basically all it is. Um, awesome workflow. Uh, problem with it was when you would do your lazy chopping, the uh, the transients could be off a little. Uh, you know, you might be just a little off. And you got to go in there. You got to do the editing. You got to come back. You got to do this. You got to tweak this, tweak that. You're like, ah, I got to do this. got to do that. So now what they have is what's called the auto snap uh, feature. Uh, that feature is only available in the manual mode. If you're over here on split, you will not get that. But however, it pretty much lines that up, um, snapping that to the uh, equal distant uh, points, which is lining up pretty good in that example there. Uh, here's grid. Again, as you can see right there, that's snapping uh pretty well there in the tech mode that's snapping pretty well there also so yeah that's not too bad you know i could actually matter of fact i think the auto snap does go you know, i'm learning something new here today myself i think it does go all the way across the board so on manual mode okay for example let's go ahead and Select delete all. We'll take all the slices out. I'm going to do a lazy chop uh, live and see if I can uh, get this to snap on point on your hardware controller. What will happen is your first pad will be lighting up. And from that point, it starts recording uh, on the fly. And that's it. You see right there, it snapped pretty well on point there. I really can't complain about that. Yeah, that's pretty tight. So if I zoom in on that, you know, we'll test it out. That looks pretty on point. Let's highlight this a little bit. Yeah, that's pretty tight, man. So Native Instruments, my hat's off to them. Brilliant. You know, machine just keeps getting better. The only other thing I want to mention here is under um, file, your preferences, general, uh, the usage data tracking now. Uh, we have a lot of uh, producers who might not want people in their business. You know, you might be a private individual. You might say, hey, listen, I don't want nobody snooping in my business. Why you need to be tracking me for, man? What's up with that? <laughs> Just basically untick this box here, you know, so don't let that bother you. Native Instruments is only doing this because they're just basically wanting to help improve our products um, by sending information. You could think, think of that kind of like if you're in a Windows computer, you know, it sends information to help track bugs and glitches and things of that nature. So if you're one of those people who would like to help Native Instruments, you know, go ahead and uh, click that box or read more icon here to get more information on that. Other than that, uh, the linking when duplicating the scenes, that's what I was talking about when I said these scenes up here were uh, linking when I was duplicating them. That's because I have this icon checked here. Now, you can untick that, you know, if, if you don't want to use that option. Um, I'm using right here link when duplicating and I'm using um, duplicating scenes and patterns because to me that's just my style my workflow I think that's quicker you know if you just want to do scenes only you can put scene only um, trying to think am I leaving anything out here and I don't think I am other than that yeah that that's pretty much it man because on, on this I'm using the MK1 here so you know you have your audio uh, set up here you know, your MIDI all set up here, you know, your uh, if you want to scan your plugins, you know, your library content. You know, if you move files and folders around, you find that in there and your hardware control, you find this here. You know, when you're setting up that um, I don't have any external MIDI devices connected right now. So that's that's not going to be nothing in there. But this is where if you want to get your uh, your MIDI set up, you know, your, your clock, your slave, whatever you want to use to control machine, you can do that. You know, your audio here, I'm using just a basic. Uh, microphone here which is a USB microphone running at 48,000 uh, 
KZ. So I don't have anything connected here as far as the inputs and the outputs go. But this is where you get all that set up. You know, if you want to, you know, select your audio inputs and outputs, you know, adjust the latency, all that good stuff. So, yeah, man, that's pretty much it, man. It's your boy Fontaine, VIP If you have any questions or concerns, hit me up. I will see you guys on the next one.